What is going on guys, it's Greg here today and I'm bringing you a Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 commentary. We're going to be going over kill streaks in depth today. You can see in the background on the uh, board that uh, I've been a little busy writing out ideas and stuff and you'll see a lot of that in today's video. The planning goes on on the board and then it goes into video format after that. Um, excuse my mess next to me, I just kind of threw stuff there as I put up that board. Um, need to get around to that but... Uh, I just wanted to say that today's video is going to be about what are the best kill streaks, what kind of kill streaks should you be running, depending on what kind of mode you're playing or what your intentions are during a match. And I just want to say as a quick disclaimer that yes, yeah, some of the kill streaks you might like are going to show up very low on the tier list when we get to that part. And um it's not to say you can't run your favorite kill streak if that happens to be one of them. All I'm saying is, is that objectively, from a competitive perspective, they're not very good. But, if you don't care about that, then run it. Anyways, let's go ahead and get right into this. Hey YouTube, Professor Hutch here, breaking down another video with my PowerPoint presentation. Welcome to Call of Duty University. Um, anyways, let's go over killstreaks, as I promised. So, for the basics, if you're brand new to Call of Duty, killstreaks are rewards given to a player upon reaching specific kill milestones, and you can, in this game, Modern Warfare 2, you can actually change it to score streaks if you want, just by toggling it, which we'll go over here in a little bit, and then it will be score milestones instead. Up to three killstreaks can be selected at once, and there's always a hidden or fourth killstreak that is active for every single player in the match. This is rewarded at a strict 30 killstreak requirement, which means only weapon and equipment kills will count towards earning this streak. The streak is the MGB, which is a nuke, and it ends the game for the team who earned it, giving it a win, and it doesn't matter if you were losing the game, you'll get the win. Killstreaks help apply pressure on the map. This is the most important part about killstreaks, and this is how I'm going to be ranking the killstreaks today, is based off of the pressure. So, let's go ahead and get into how you guys can change the score streaks if you prefer playing objective and try and get those wins for your team. Moving on to how you can choose and activate your score streaks, you can go to the killstreaks menu, and then in the bottom left corner, we are going to go toggle or score streaks if we run around this option and um, it's in that blue circle there below you gotta press R2 if you're on PlayStation right trigger if you're on Xbox or you can if you're on a mouse and keyboard you can go ahead and use two or just click it um, and then this will toggle score streaks and it can switch it back to kill streaks if you don't want to use score streaks now score streaks are scaled as one kill is equal to 125 score um, as the translation between the costs. You're not going to be earning 125 score per kill in every single game mode. I believe just TDM has it that way. Um, every other game mode is set around 100. So you're going to have to keep that in mind. But if you are playing the objective, it will actually be cheaper to earn kill streaks uh, rather than, or it'll be cheaper to earn score streaks rather than running kill streaks. But you have to be playing the objective. Otherwise, it's going to actually cost more with score streaks enabled. So, again, one kill point that is in the milestones, if it's four kills for UAV, you have to multiply it by 125, you get 500. That's the new score cost requirement. Now, I will be going over all these individually, so let's go ahead and get into that in a little bit. So, let's go ahead and talk about choosing your kill streaks. There's two types of kill streaks. There's informational kill streaks, which are going to affect the mini map. And then there are going to be lethal kill streaks, which are going to get you kills as well as hold positions on the map or breakthrough positions. And I believe that these are best used together. You should not just run only lethal and you should not just run only informational. You should try to have a nice mix based off of the kill streaks that you can earn. So let's talk about choosing kill streaks again. And if you don't know already, you can only choose one kill streak from a specific milestone. So that means if you want to run UAV and bomb drone in unison, you can't. You just can't. You, you have to pick between the UAV or the bomb drone. So informational kill streaks, they benefit your team. 
they're going to allow for kill streak snowballing, which means if you call in a UAV, your whole team can utilize it, and therefore they can play positioning and earn more kill streaks. And it also allows for great decision making. Again, UAVs and advanced UAVs help you rotate around the map and position yourself in order to take out enemies. So they're very powerful kill streaks, and they're some of the best kill streaks in the entire game, in my opinion. Lethal kill streaks are also very good because they're going to help clear objectives as well as map control. And the way I'm going to rank them, as I mentioned earlier, it, we are going to be utilizing a tier list at the end after I go through every single kill streak. Uh, I'm ranking them based off strength and usefulness. Um, and this is determined by pressure and cost effectiveness. I am not doing this based off of the amount of kills they are going to yield you. I don't believe you should just run kill streaks to just go for straight kills, but rather how much you are going to contribute to a match to a specific niche. So objective play, helping your team make better decisions, and all that kind of stuff. So that is how I rank these. And you can mix and match them the whatever way you want to. But again, that is how I rank kill streaks. So let's talk about the first kill streak you're ever going to earn. And it's also one of the best kill streaks in the entire game, the UAV. It reveals non-ghost perk users on the minimap periodically as well as it's going to reveal unsuppressed gunfire on the radar during its use. Now, there is one little thing I do want to mention is people always say, why would I ever run a suppressor in this game if it still disables the ghost perk if I'm trying to be stealthy? And here's the thing. If you're using a suppressor and you're firing the gun while an enemy has UAV up, you're not going to show actively on the minimap until the UAV scans over top of you. Then it's going to ping you. But your gunfire is not going to be actively pinging you while the UAV is up. It's the same thing with the ghost perk on. If you shoot a suppressed weapon, it's just going to disable the ghost perk. It's not going to actively show your gunfire on the enemy UAV. It's just going to show a ping if Ghost doesn't re-enable before the next ping. I hope that clears things up for you guys. Moving on. Uh, the cost, I put the formula in parentheses, so you're going to see the amount of kills first, then you're going to see the hardline discount second, and this goes for every kill streak. It's a four kill streak, three with hardline, 500 score streak, 375 with hardline. The UAV has high pressure on the map. Reason being is, in the early game, no one has ghosts in this game due to the perk system. Therefore, every single player on the enemy team is going to show up on the UAV, and until they earn their ghost perk, you know where every single person is on the enemy team while UAVs are active. For that reason alone, this kill streak is S tier, 100%. Moving on to our next kill streak, this is one of the other four kill streaks in the game. This is the bomb drone. This is going to allow you to control this thing and you can clear out enemies from rooms or power positions. And one of the maps that comes in mind, I think this might be useful on, is something like Farm 18. Um, again, it's one of those four kill streaks, so the score and kills could be the same as the UAV. As for pressure, this is such a low pressure kill streak, especially because it's easily destroyed. And it's only going to usually yield you anywhere from no kills if it gets destroyed or one kill uh, if you're able to get it up to somebody. And therefore, I think this kill streak is just not worth running. And I'm going to put it in D tier because it's really the worst kill streak in the game. But again, if you like it and you have fun using it, then go ahead and use it. Next up, we have the counter UAV, which. This is the direct counter to the advanced UAV and enemy UAVs. It will also block the enemy minimap, so that way they cannot see where their teammates are positioned, and they're going to have to use communication or try to shoot this thing down if they want to know where things are going on on the map. So this is a powerful kill streak, but it's so easy to destroy in this game, and it almost always spawns in the center of the map when it's called in. And for that reason alone, I don't really think it's that good, but it is good on indoor maps, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So I would say the pressure is overall medium. And just for our kill counts, um, we're now entering the five kill streaks. So these ones are going to cost us five kills, four with hardline, and for using score streaks, it's going to be 625 score or 500 with hardline. Next up is the care package, and... 
here's my issue with the care package. First off, what it does is going to drop you a random kill streak, and it can be stolen by enemies. So you have to be careful where you call it in. And you're more than likely going to earn lower tier streaks than higher tier streaks. Also, MGBs are not in the care package. Another, this is another five kill streak, and the pressure is going to vary because it depends on what you earn. And overall, I'm gonna put this in C tier, and here's why. I actually think the care package is a good streak, especially for new players, but in higher level matches where the skill based matchmaking is much thicker, you're never going to see these really being called in because they take you out of the action for too long. And basically, you want to be using kill streaks that are going to allow you to still be on the move or get a ton of kills from above. So that way, like a chopper gunner, for example, if you know you're killing a lot of people and keeping them locked in the spawn, then your team can push up and grab objectives. But if you're waiting in the back of the map for a care package to come down and then you might get a streak that's helpful, it just takes out precious time that could be you you could be uh, using spending the you know just playing the match. So that's why I really only recommend the care package for newer players. Next up for our final five kill streak, we are going to have the cluster mine, and I love this kill streak. Um, just want to point that out real quick, and let's talk about why. So it deploys a cluster of mines to defend a location. You throw it down, it just scatters mines everywhere. This kill streak is so good in ground war and domination, be or even hard point. And the reason being is you just lob this thing down, it spreads a bunch of mines, and then if people just want to blind rush an objective, they're just going to die to it. So it's it's really good even though it doesn't apply a lot of pressure. It's just such great defense for grabbing objectives and you can even use it as offense like in ground war it takes forever to capture a flag so if you're the only one capturing throw this down on an objective and then it can actually help you capture the flag because if people are trying to push you they'll die to the cluster mine so i give this a tier even though the pressure isn't that good the amount of different uses this kill streak has for objective play and overall just keeping map control it's a very very good kill streak and i would recommend running it if you haven't already Next up is the Precision Airstrike. We are now entering our six kill streaks, five with Hardline, 750 score, or 625 with Hardline. So, for the next couple kill streaks, that will be our cost, and now let's talk about the Precision Airstrike. The Precision Airstrike is two jets that will airstrike a marked location. This is great for clearing outdoor objectives or rooftops in ground war. Um, but it just doesn't apply a lot of pressure because it comes in really quick and people can just move their location if they hear enemy precision airstrike incoming. On top of that, it's not going to give you a nice kill yield if people are rotating, but again, if people are kind of just sitting there in ground war on rooftops, then go ahead, run it. But generally, you're going to really only get one kill, and again, if they rotate, especially in 6v6, you're probably not going to get anything. For that reason alone, I'm going to give it C tier. I don't think it's useless, I think it's decent, but it just doesn't apply enough pressure, and there's better options. The cruise missile is up next, and this is one of the first killstreaks where you will see we have separate rankings for ground war or 6v6. So, let's go ahead and get right into the cruise missile. You deploy a remote-controlled missile, and this is great for clearing rooftops, power positions, just like the precision airstrike, but it's also amazing in ground war because you can destroy vehicles. So for the pressure, it's going to be medium-low. It's medium if you're hitting a vehicle, low if you're not. Uh, the estimated kill yield for 6v6 is going to be around none to one kill. And for ground, we're usually one to two kills. Um, and again, very, very useful for destroying vehicles and helicopters. So for 6v6, I give it D tier because you're taking yourself out of the action for so long just to get maybe a single kill. If if you're going for objective kills, this is just not going to help you at all. They'll just move. So I don't really think it's good for that reason in 6v6. But in ground war, it's A tier because destroying vehicles has a huge impact on the map. So I would highly recommend running this kill streak when you're playing ground war compared to 6v6. The mortar strike is a great objective tool. And for that reason alone, I actually think this is one of the better six kill streaks. This is great for defending outdoor objectives or blocking off high traffic areas. You can target where you want this to land, and then it will repeatedly strike that area for quite some time. To be honest with you guys, it lasts very long. Um, so the pressure, medium-high, I would say it's pretty closer to the high end of pressure because of how long it lasts, and it completely blocks off that area. 
Now, our estimated kill yield, you don't want to really use this for kills. You want to use it just to apply pressure on the map. So you're not really going to get many, but if people are trying to attack an objective you own that you place this on that is outside, you'll probably rack up a couple kills. So expect none or one. And again, B tier, because blocking off an objective you own, especially in domination, if the B flag is outside, is really, really overpowered, if I'm being completely honest. We're now entering the seven kill streak. So again, seven kills, six with hardline, 875 score, 750 with hardline. So the sentry gun allows you to defend a specific area that you place it with automated sentry fire, but there is a downside to the sentry gun and it has limited range as well as it is very slow to place in this game. Also, the targeting is not that great. So therefore, I'm going to be honest with you guys, while it does apply some medium pressure because people do have to be wary of this thing if they're going to enter a hallway or corridor or something or go near an objective if you place it there, um... It's not going to really get you a lot of kills. It's just more of like a people were like, oh, yeah, I should probably avoid that, you know. So zero to two kills. Expect that with each sentry gun use. But I still give it C tier because I think that it does have some use outside of just, you know, racking up kills. Um, it does apply some pressure on the map. And especially in domination, it can be really useful or even hard point if you're trying to defend the point. The SAE is one of my favorite kill streaks in this game, and how this works is kind of like the lightning strike in previous CODs. Basically, you launch a targeted airstrike on three locations, and it will stun freshly spawned enemies. It won't kill them if they're freshly spawned, but it will stun them. And it is great for clearing out positions in ground war. The pressure this is going to apply, I would say, is medium, because you can take people out of power positions, and again, you have three strikes that you can utilize during the use of this kill streak. On top of that, it's going to yield you generally one to two kills, but it can yield you quite a bit more too if their people are clustered up together. And overall, I'm gonna give it A tier because clearing out positions, especially in ground war, there's a lot of open area and rooftops and just being able to clear three rooftops at your disposal for seven kills or even six with hardline, that is well worth the cost. So I'd recommend running the SAE. We are now entering the eight kill streaks. So this one is going to be eight kills or seven with hardline, a thousand score or 875 with hardline. The VTOL Jet is one of the best kill streaks in the entire game. The reason being is whenever you call it in, you're going to mark an area that it's going to hit with a few missiles, and then it's going to sweep back and proceed to defend that targeted location. The amount of pressure that this killstreak applies where you place it is extremely high. Your enemies will be afraid to come outside and they will be afraid to go anywhere near this thing because it will instantly target them and incinerate them. So this is one of the highest pressure killstreaks in the game and for its cost of 8 kills, it's also going to yield you generally at least 3 kills. For that reason alone, the amount of pressure and the cost of this kill streak. This is an S tier kill streak. It is just so good, and I would highly recommend to anybody if you're looking for a kill streak to run that is both good in reward as well as overall utility. The VTOL Jet is for you. The Overwatch Hilo, while it is not as effective at killing people as the VTOL Jet, it's still a very good kill streak, and here's why it's going to follow you around and it's going to ping enemies it sees. And it's going to ping them before it engages them. Now, the pressure that the Overwatch Hilo is pretty high, I would say, but it's not quite as high as the VTOL Jet because it does have delayed targeting. But again, people are going to be wary of this thing being in the sky and they're not going to want to be running around. Um, but it kind of does give away your location because it is following you around, but it's only a rough position that they'll be able to target you from. It should average you a couple kills, I would say two on average, and overall I would say it's an A tier kill streak because it's a hybrid between an informational kill streak and a lethal kill streak. So overall, it's a good kill streak, but I would say you should have a higher pressure kill streak equipped when you are also running this. So you might want to run something that has higher pressure than the Overwatch Hilo as well. The Wilson HS is a very good kill streak for indoor maps. You control this little vehicle and it has a sentry turret on it. 
and uh, you can fire the sentry turret, but if you don't want to control this thing, all you have to do is drive it to a location where you want it to sit, and then it will act as a sentry gun. So I would just recommend running this over the sentry gun uh, if you don't want to run the VTOL jet or the Overwatch helo. And it applies medium high pressure on the map. Again, it's high pressure if you're going to be controlling it. Medium if it's a sentry gun because they're going to be aware of this thing and they're not going to try to peek it. But you can rack up a pretty good amount of kills with this kill streak per use as long as you're controlling it. And I would say you can at least get three on average. And overall, I'm going to give it B tier. I don't think it is a bad kill streak at all, but I also don't think it's quite as competitive as the VTOL Jet or the Overwatch Helo. It still has its use on indoor maps, but overall, I would still even say the VTOL Jet is just better even on indoor maps because it can watch the outer areas. The Stealth Bomber. I love this Stealth Bomber, but I also hate the Stealth Bomber depending on what game mode we're playing. The Stealth Bomber is going to be the start of our 10 kill streaks. So 10 kills without Hardline, 9 with Hardline, 1250 score without Hardline, and 11. 25 score with hardline. As for the stealth bomber, it carpet bombs a targeted location. There is no announcement or HUD icon for the enemy team when you call this in, and it's also going to destroy or even damage vehicles, which means this kill streak is amazing for ground war. However, in 6v6, don't run this. Please, for the love of God, do yourself a favor and take it off. Low pressure on the map because it's going to do one pass and it's probably not going to kill anybody. If it does, it maybe it might get you one kill, but that's about it. It's just horrible in 6v6. D tier kill streak. You go on a 10 kill streak for this thing to do one pass and maybe get a kill. Yeah, no pressure at all. But in ground war, very high pressure on the map because it's going to go down a straight line. And again, ground war maps are wider. They're bigger, they're more dynamic, they got vehicles, people are scattered all over the place, sniping and all that it's jazz, rooftops, yada yada. It might get you about three to four kills on average. And for that reason, because it also damages vehicles, I'm going to put this in A tier. And it's also great if you're an objective player trying to attack an objective and you don't know if there's people defending it. Lay that stealth bomber down on it and start rotating towards that objective. And by the time you get there, it should be cleared out. Moving on, we have the Chopper Gunner, and I love the Chopper Gunner, especially for 6v6. In Ground War, it's easier to shoot down, so I'd recommend maybe just use, sticking with the Stealth Bomber for the 10 kill streaks or the Emergency Airdrop if you really wanted to. Um, but the Chopper Gunner, it's equipped with 8 Hydra Rockets, which is pretty much the bread and butter of this kill streak because if people are behind windows or behind cover, you can lob a Hydra Rocket into that window and uh, you'll be able to pick them off. And usually there's a couple enemies that start clustering up in buildings while this thing is out. So you can kind of thread the needle, you know, through the building. And you'll be able to take out multiple people that are inside a building if you know how to use this thing effectively. And maybe I'll make a guide on it in the future. This, as for the pressure and the estimated kill yield, this is extreme pressure. Which is what I classify as the highest amount of pressure you can apply at any given time on the map. You'll probably average around 7 kills if you're maybe really new at this thing you don't really know how to use it maybe a little bit less and if you're really experienced with this kill streak you can easily get 10 to 15 kills per use i'm not even lying um and overall i'm gonna give it s tier because the amount of pressure it applies on the map as well as it's just it's pretty cost efficient 10 kills nine with hardline not bad at all especially for something that is going to apply so much pressure on the map and allow your team to retake objectives or you can keep the enemies at bay off of objectives so overall just a very powerful kill streak the emergency airdrop is one of our fun kill streaks but it is nothing special um the reason being is well the emergency airdrop airdrops three packages together and these care packages have the same odds as a normal care package but i will say having three come down at once especially in ground war and they come bundled up means you can be anywhere you want on the map called and they're going to come together they're not going to spread out and you can collect them safely especially if you're in an area that you deem is safe and um the pressure is going to vary depending on what kind of kill streaks you get but again three random kill streaks especially in something like ground war can really help turn the tides of the battle therefore i'm give it b tier because I think it's pretty good, but again, if you get something like a bomb drone, a cruise missile, and a cluster mine, or counter UAV or something, well, that's not really as efficient, um, especially considering you went on a 10 kill streak. so yeah, use at your own risk. 
Moving on to our 12 kill streaks. Again, 12 kills to earn, 11 with hardline, 1500 score, 1375 with hardline. The 12 kill streaks, the gunship starts us off, and it's going to last 40 seconds, allowing us to rain down fire from above. The main armament on the gunship is actually a laser guided rocket, so you can control it. And if you don't want to control it and you want it to go in a specific area, just shoot it off and instantly press triangle to switch to the next armament, and then it will go wherever you're, you were last looking. Um, this is highly effective in ground war, especially with the 105mm and 40mm armaments, because they are going to help you destroy vehicles with ease. Um, in 6v6, I actually think the gunship is an average killstreak in its B tier, even though it still applies extreme pressure. The problem is, for 12 kills, it just doesn't last long enough, in my opinion, and it also just isn't going to net you a lot of kills. I know I said kills aren't really the reason I'm ranking this, but the chopper gunner is just far superior for 6v6 game modes. Also, I think it's worth noting that you can't actually shoot down the gunship with regular bullets. You have to use um, rocket launchers. So, also in ground war, though, this is probably one of the best kill streaks in the entire game, and it's going to apply extreme pressure on a map. Again, S tier because we can destroy vehicles, and you can do so much in a short period of time and change the tides for your team. And for our last 12 kill streak, we have the best kill streak in the entire game. This is the advanced UAV. It lasts for 56 seconds, and the enemy's position is revealed in real time on the minimap. Ghost perk users will ping periodically, like a UAV, instead of real time. And the reason it is the best kill streak in the game is because one, it cannot be destroyed. Two, any good player is going to be positioning themselves and trying to get the best advantage at all times on every single enemy they come across with this kill streak in the air. It allows for the ultimate decision making and a lot of the times your enemies might even think you're cheating while this kill streak is active because again, if you're checking your radar properly and then relating it to your actual scenarios in game, you're always going to have the drop on your enemy. You always know where they are while this thing is active and therefore it's basically like having wall hacks. The pressure it applies on the map is extreme. I mean, if there's a category above extreme, I would have put it on this kill streak because if your team knows how to use this effectively, it's over for the enemy team. Especially if you're playing with people who are also running the advanced UAV, or if your enemies are playing with other people who are running advanced UAVs. If you hear multiple of these things streamlined together, just say GG's, honestly, because it's you're not going to win the game. It's just impossible unless your team is able to somehow stop them from earning more or is able to throw up some counter UAVs that they can't shoot down. But again, overall, the best kill streak in the entire game at S tier. The final kill streak I'm going to go over is the Juggernaut. And basically, you equip a Juggernaut suit, you have very high health but it does not regenerate. This is great for objective play and is probably one of the ultimate kill streaks for playing the objective and winning games. However, the cost is so high that, I mean, I don't really think anyone ever really runs it. Back in the day, the Juggernaut was an 11 kill streak, which kind of made more sense, especially because it doesn't regenerate health. You can actually take them out pretty quickly with certain items. And overall, that's why I almost never run it in any of my matches. It also takes your ability away to earn more streaks. So again, I'm a little bit biased towards this kill streak. But um, anyways, it's a 15 kill streak, uh, 14 with hardline, 1875 score, 1750 with hardline. It applies extreme pressure in 6v6, probably netting you around 10 kills on average a game if you're pretty decent with it. And in ground war, medium pressure because people could just avoid you and you're always on the radar too whenever you're in this thing. Um, you might get seven kills in ground war. So it's S tier for 6v6, B tier for ground war. Overall, it's fun, but honestly, you're better off just trying to get it out of a care package because there's just so many better options, especially for cost efficiency. So our final tier list is going to look like this for 6v6, and again, if you want the individual explanations, then go ahead and rewind to the specific kill streak in the description below. Um, but if you're just skipping to this part, then we'll go over Ground War next. And here we have the Ground War or Invasion rankings, and uh, it's just a little bit different. Some kill streaks are switched around, like the Juggernaut, the Gunship. Um, the cruise missile, stealth bomber, those are the kill streaks that are pretty much changed around. All the rest pretty much remains the same. 
uh, for how useful they are in ground war. So as I said earlier, indoor maps, outdoor maps, and both type of maps have different kill streaks that are more useful on one or the other. So indoor maps, you, as you guys can see, we have bomb drone, cluster mine, counter UAV, sentry gun, Wilson, and juggernaut. Basically, anything that is more ground based is going to be better for indoor maps. Again, counter UAV is a little bit better on indoor maps because they might not be able to find it and shoot it down as easy. But on outdoor maps, the precision airstrike, cruise missile, mortar strike, SAE, the gunship, stealth bomber, chopper gunner, anything that is more aerial based is going to be much more effective than something that is ground based. And then just streaks, you can never go wrong depending on what map you're playing on is going to be the UAV, the care package, the VTOL jet, the overwatch helo, emergency airdrop, and the advanced UAV. Then we have killstreaks that are based around playing the objective. So if you're going to be trying to defend objectives, the cluster mine might be a little bit more of a defensive killstreak than an offensive killstreak. Like I said, you can use it offensively, but I would really recommend using it more for defense, especially 6v6. The mortar strike is also a great defense killstreak. The sentry gun, again, we talked about this one, putting it inside buildings is just very useful, especially around objectives that you own. It will help guard them. The VTOL jet is great for guarding outdoor objectives, and the Wilson on our indoor maps, we can place it in sentry mode near our objectives, so overall, some pretty good defense killstreaks for both, and you could just never go wrong with using these killstreaks for either playstyle. The UAV and the advanced UAV are always going to be the absolute best killstreaks for aggression or defense, and for offense, I'd recommend something like a precision airstrike, overwatch helo, um, the stealth bomber, the SAE, and the Juggernaut. Again, you're not going to see killstreaks that take you out of the action. You're going to see killstreaks that are still going to allow you to have your gun up, so that way you're able to kill enemies and also earn more killstreaks or just have pressure applied while you can still apply pressure on the map as well. So that's why we don't have things like the gunship or the chopper gunner on this list. So now we have the streaker role, and this is a very important role in Call of Duty, and ideally there should be one or two per team in 6v6 and a few in Ground War as well. In 6v6, the streaker is a player who focuses on defending owned objectives or playing near objectives in order to hold enemies from reaching the main objective players. Streakers should also play the objective as needed, but trade out positions with the main objective player when they arrive at the point and assist the main objective player by hunting the players who are attacking the team-occupied objective. In Ground War, the streaker role changes just a little bit. The streaker should play near friendly occupied flags that are near the center of the map, which would be D, C, and B flag. The streaker can also attack enemy objectives. What you should do is play near the enemy objective and attempt to rack up some kills as well as capture kills while waiting for more teammates to show up and help assist you with the capture. Score streaks should be utilized at all times in the ground war mode because you will find more score reward for playing around objectives than 6v6. That's not to say that score streaks aren't useful in 6v6, but it highly depends on the game mode. Streaker's main focus in ground war is holding enemies away while waiting for backup in order to gain game-changing rewards. So now I want to go over some streaker roll perks and equipment. And to start off with our perks, we're going to be running scavenger because ammo is very useful. Whenever we are going on longer kill streaks, we're going to need more ammo at our disposal. Tracker is really good because it's going to hide death skulls from the enemies, so therefore if they're not communicating with each other, it's going to be harder for them to pinpoint your location. Hardline is also really good because it's going to reduce the cost of each kill streak. As we discussed earlier, 100 score uh, or 125 score or one kill whenever you were running hardline. And then the ghost perk is going to keep us from being seen on the UAVs. And this is especially useful in ground war. Now in 6v6 you can change it up to maybe bird's eye or uh, quick fix, but in ground war I'd highly recommend ghost. Next up we have the proximity mine, the claymore, the, and the stim. So you want to choose between the proximity mine or the claymore depending on the map. Again, proximity mines useful around staircases. Claymores are better around doorways and just maps that have a lot of different angles. The stim is a great piece of equipment because if we get shot at, especially if we're not running quick fix, we can go ahead and regenerate our health on demand. 
And if you really wanted to, you could even put on extra tactical instead of scavenger because we're always going to be trying to run the munitions box when we're a streaker. I'd highly recommend putting on the portable radar or DDoS as well with Field Upgrade Pro. And the portable radar is good in 6v6, especially if you're not running the UAV and you're running some higher kill streaks. You'll be able to put this down on demand to get a personal UAV around you. And it actually helps your team too in this game. DDoS is great because in Ground War, there's going to be a lot of players around as well as equipment and vehicles. And you're going to earn score for disabling them with DDoS. So you can actually rack up a lot of score when you are running DDoS. Again, we're always going to have munitions boxed up because we need ammo, we need tacticals, and we need lethals to help support us while we are trying to do the streaker role. So I want to go over the absolute most optimal kill streak setups in the player count varying mode. So 6v6 invasion and ground war. And I still believe that you should use kill streaks based around your skill level. But if you do want to know what is the absolute killstreak meta, then here it is for you. So in 6v6, I think the UAV, the VTOL Jet, and the Chopper Gunner are the absolute best killstreaks you can run for pressure and cost efficiency, especially whenever you mix in the hardline perk. In Invasion, it's going to be the UAV, the Stealth Bomber, and the Gunship. Again, the Stealth Bombers can take out a lot of AIs, can take out a lot of enemies, especially if they're kind of just sniping in their spawn. And the Gunship is also very important in this mode because you're always going to have good angles and the maps are pretty open. In Ground War, I think the SAE, the VTOL Jet, and the Advanced UAV are the absolute best killstreaks to be running. And the reason being is the SAE, again, we talked about taking players off of the rooftops. The VTOL Jet is going to guard outdoor flags. And the Advanced UAV is going to help you and your entire team to know where all the enemies are at all times and make better decision making for its duration of 56 seconds. So now I just want to talk about one of the last parts, and this is individual skill level. Your individual skill level should be kept in mind when you are selecting killstreaks, and you should select killstreaks that are easy for you to obtain ideally multiple times per game. The more you're able to call in a killstreak is going to have more effect than if you are running a killstreak that you might earn a couple times per play session rather than every game. So your individual skill level should determine what kind of streaks you want to run. And I'm going to use KD ratio. I hate using KD ratio as a skill rating, but I'm just going to use it to give you an idea of what kind of streaks you should ideally run. So if you are a 0.0 to 0.99 KD player, I'd recommend running something that is a of the four, five, six, or seven kill streak milestones. If you are a 1.00 to 1.99 KD player, I'd recommend running something of the four, five, six, seven, eight or 10 milestones. Again, I have this broken down per kill streak, as you can see on the screen. So your first, second, and third streak. And then for our last tier, the 2.0 plus KD players run something of four, five, seven, eight, ten, 10, or 12 kills. For the final part of this video, I'm going to go over some great killstreak setups that are going to be optimal for different play styles and modes or whatever it might be that you're playing. So, like we said, you should be using killstreaks based around your skill level, and we've already touched up upon that, so uh, yeah, I probably should have added that part out. Anyways, great killstreak setups. The UAV, the VTOL Jet, and the Chopper Gunner are just overall one of the best ones for just going for strict kills, as well as in 6v6 modes, the amount of pressure as we talked about, how much this applies. If you're an objective player, I'd recommend running the UAV, the Cluster Mine, the VTOL Jet. If you are new to the game, I would highly recommend running the UAV because it's going to help you find where enemy players are, the care package, so you can get a taste for some of the other kill streaks, and the cruise missile because while you're in the cruise missile, you're actually going to see the locations of every single enemy and where they're at on the map um, while they are alive. And uh, if they're running cold blooded, they won't show up, but it can help you engage future enemies. If you're an anti vehicle player in Ground War, you're going to want to go with the cruise missile, the stealth bomber, and the gunship. If you're looking for a little fun niche killstreak setup, then I'd recommend running the Potluck killstreak setup. This is the UAV, which is going to help you earn your care package and emergency airdrops. You can get four randomized killstreaks per life if you're able to earn that emergency airdrop each life. And for our support killstreak setup, this is if you just want to be team support at all times, the UAV, the Overwatch, Hilo, and the Advanced UAV are the best informational support streaks. 
Anyways, there you guys have it. This has been one absolutely long video, and I apologize for making it so long, but I felt there was just a lot of information that we needed to go over, and I wouldn't be surprised if, you know, people were just kind of skipping around, picking and choosing which parts they wanted to learn about, and that is why I put all the timestamps in the description below because I don't expect people to watch the entire video. But if you did watch the entire video, I just want to say thank you guys so much because that watch time is very important for helping me grow the channel. And again, I love making these videos for you guys. I love making these informational, educational content because I, at the end of the day, I just want to see everybody get out there, have fun on the game. And if improving is something that you want to do because you might find you're going to have more fun by improving at the game, then by all means, that is my goal at helping you guys become better players. Anyways, I'll see you all in the next video. Be sure to drop a like, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I will see you all in the next video. Have a great day, and peace out.